So let's start with cycle detection. This is actually a warm up for topological sort. So does my graph have any cycles? G has a cycle. I claim this happens if and only if G has a back edge. Or let's say a depth first search of that graph has a back edge. So it doesn't matter where I start from or you know, how this algorithm, I run this top level DFS algorithm, explore the whole graph, because I want to know in the whole graph, is there a cycle? I claim if there's a back edge, then there's a cycle. Cool. So it all comes down to back edges. This will work for both directed and undirected graphs. Detecting cycles is pretty easy in undirected graphs. It's a little more subtle with directed graphs, because you have to worry about the edge directions. So let's prove this. We haven't done the uh, serious proof in a while, so this is still a pretty easy one. But let's think about it. What do you think is the easy direction to prove here? Left or right? To more democracy. How many people think left is easy? A couple. How many people think right is easy? A whole bunch more. I disagree with you. <laughs> I mean, I guess it depends what you consider easy. Um, let me show you how easy left is. Okay, left is, I have a back edge. I want to claim there's a cycle. What does a back edge look like? Well, it's an edge to an ancestor in the tree. If this node is a descendant of this node, or this node is an ancestor of this node, uh, that's saying that there are tree edges. There's a path, a tree path, that connects one to the other. Okay, so this is a tr these are tree edges, because this is supposed to be an ancestor, and this is supposed to be a descendant. And this is, that's the definition of a back edge. Okay, do you see a cycle? <laughs> I see a cycle. This is a cycle, directed cycle. So if there's a back edge, by definition, it makes a cycle. Now, it's harder to say you know, if I have 10 back edges, how many cycles are there? Could be many. But if there's a back edge, there's definitely at least one cycle. The other direction is also not too hard, but I would hesitate to call it easy. Any suggestions? If I know there is a cycle, how do I prove that there's a back edge somewhere? Think about that. Let me draw a cycle. Here's a length k cycle. Where do you think, which of these edges do you think is going to be a back edge? Let's hope it's one of these edges. Sorry? VK to V0. That's a good idea. <laughs> Maybe this is a back edge. Uh, of course, this is symmetric. Why, why that edge? I labeled it in a suggestive way. But I need to say something before I know actually which edge is going to be the back edge. Yeah? You have to say you start at V0. Start at V0. If I started a search of v0, that looks good because the search is kind of going to go in this direction. vk will maybe be the last thing to be visited. That's not actually true. Could be there's an edge directly from v0 to vk. But intuitively, vk will be kind of later. And then when this edge gets visited, this will be an ancestor. It will be a back edge. Okay, of course, this, we may not start a search here. So calling it the start of the search is not quite right. A little different. Yeah. First vertex that gets hit. Good. So let's. I'm going to start the numbering v0. Let's assume v0 is the first vertex in the cycle. Uh, visited by the depth first search. Okay. 
together if you want some pillows, if you'd like them. Uh, especially convenient that they're in front. Um, so, right, if it's not V0, say V3 was the first one visited, we'll just change the labeling. So that that's V0, that's V1, that's V, and so on. Um, so set this labeling so that V0 is the first one, first vertex that gets visited. Okay, then I claim that, let me just write the claim first, this edge VKV0 will be a back edge. I'll just say is back edge. Yeah, I would say this is not obvious. Be a little careful. We have to somehow exploit the depth first nature of DFS. In fact, that it goes deep. It goes as deep as it can before backtracking. So if you think about it, we're starting, at this point we are starting a search relative to the cycle. No one has been visited, except V0 just got visited. It has a parent pointer off somewhere else. OK. Uh, what do we do next? Well, we visit all the outgoing edges from V0. There might be many of them. Could be an edge from V0 to V1. Could be an edge from V0 to V3. Could be an edge from V0 to something else. Uh, we don't know which one's going to happen first. But the one thing I can claim is that uh, V1 will be visited before we finish visiting V0. Okay, from V0, we might go somewhere else, we might go somewhere else that might eventually lead to V1 by some other route. But in particular, we look at that edge from V0 to V1. And so at some point, during, we're searching, we're visiting all the things reachable from V0. That includes V1. And that will happen. We will touch V1 for the first time, because it hasn't been touched yet. We will visit it before we finish visiting V0. Same goes actually for all the VIs because they're all reachable from V0. So you can prove this by induction. You have to visit V1 before you finish visiting V0. Uh, you'll have to visit V2 before you finish visiting V1, although you might actually visit V2 before V1. You definitely finish, you'll finish V2 before you finish V1, and so on. Uh, so VI will be visited before you finish VI minus 1. But in particular, what we care about is that VK is visited before we finish V0. And it will be entirely visited. We will finish visiting VK before we finish visiting V0. We will start VK after we start V0, because V0 is first. So the order is going to look like start V0. At some point, we will start VK. Then we'll finish VK. Then we'll finish V0. This is something that textbook likes to call, uh, and I like to call, balanced parentheses. You can think of it as we start V0, uh, then we start VK, then we finish VK, and then we finish V0. And these match up, and they're balanced. It will, depth first search always looks like that, because once you start a vertex, you keep chugging until you've visited all the things reachable from it. Then you finish it. You won't finish V0 before you finish VK, because it's part of the recursion. You can't return at a higher level before you return at the lower levels. OK, so what, we've just argued that the order is like this, because V0 was first, so VK starts after V0. And also, we're going to finish VK before we finish V0, because it's reachable and hasn't been visited before. So in here, we consider uh, VK V0. When we consider that edge, it will be a back edge. Why? Because V0 is currently on the recursion stack. And so you will have marked V0 as currently in process. So when you look at that edge, you see it's a back edge. It's an edge to your ancestor. 
That's the proof. Any questions about that? It's pretty easy once you set up a starting point, which is look at the first time you visit the cycle, then just think about how you walk around the cycle. There's lots of ways you might walk around the cycle, but guaranteed you'll visit VK at some point. Then you'll look at the edge. V0 is still in the stack, so it's a back edge. And so this proves that having a cycle is equivalent to having a back edge. This gives you an easy linear time algorithm to tell, does my graph have a cycle? And if it does, it's actually easy to find one, because we find a back edge. Just follow the tree edges, and you get your cycle. So if someone gives you a graph and say, hey, I think this is acyclic, you can very quickly say, nope, it's not. Here's a cycle. Or say, yeah, I agree. No back edges. I only have tree, forward, and cross edges. 